Hi, welcome to Simcha, a celebration of life. I'm your host, Eitan Berger. As Jews around the world start to celebrate the festival of Pesach or Passover, the Simcha team met with Meira Ranan, who explains the crossing of the Red Sea as depicted by the painting of an Israeli artist, Yoram Ranan. Crossing the sea is a major Jewish theme. Um, it is um, something that happens on a yearly basis after the holiday, the seventh day of the holiday of Passover. We actually celebrate crossing the sea. And um, in Jewish tradition, all our holidays Passover and Sukkot are not something that just happened in the past, but it's something that we uh, experience uh, on a yearly basis. So every year on the seventh day of Passover, we have the ho this holiday. It's called the seventh Shvi'i Shel Pesach, the seventh day, seventh day of Pesach, where we re celebrate this event which in Judaism is, a, is really a symbol of our faith. Crossing the sea is not only happens um, once a year, but it's really a daily event because during the prayers every morning, it's part of the prayers, which are prayers of praise and thankfulness, where we every day actually sing as Yeshir, and Mo Moses and the children of Israel sang this song as part of our prayers, as a symbol of our faith and of um, leaping beyond barriers and going again, uh, breaking through obstacles. And so it is a symbol for us of our daily rebirth. This painting is called Crossing the Red Sea Blue, and it actually um, developed in stages. It began inspired by a trip to the Oceanarium in a lot. It was just a beautiful seascape. And Yoram said that he wanted to go beyond mere beauty and prettiness. And so he took the canvas and he spilled paint all over it. And what happened in that process was that this wall, blue wall appeared that looked like a wall of an ocean. And that's when the idea came that this was actually a crossing of the sea. And he put in like suggestions of people. And I think the painting really is a metaphor for our, our own process. Every day is a crossing of the sea. Every day we want to break beyond barriers and go beyond mere prettiness or beauty to reach greater depth. And so it requires actually a leap of faith as the artist did by spilling paint on the canvas. We need to take our leap of faith and cross beyond the obstacles and beyond the barriers to reach greater expression in our lives, a greater depth and greater sense of spirituality. Matzah, or unleavened bread, is a traditional food eaten during the week-long festival of Pesach. However, if you aren't a fan of matzah, our resident chef, Saran Chayat, shares with us a recipe on how to transform matzah meal into delicious and fluffy Passover rolls. On the festival of Passover, we don't eat any form of leavened bread. A wonderful alternative to eating matzah is the Pesach dick roll. We start off by placing our water and oil onto boil. And once that's boiled, we'll add it to our dry ingredients. Whilst that's boiling, we'll put our dry ingredients into our machine. This is our matzo meal. Some sugar. and salt. Once your water and oil mixture has cooled down a bit, you're gonna add it to the dry ingredients in the bowl and mix. We're now gonna start adding the eggs one by one. Now remember, during Passover, we don't put raising agents into our mixtures. 
So our eggs and the eight of them are going to act as a raising agent. We're going to add the eggs slowly so as not to cook them when we add them. I put the eggs in a glass first to make sure that there are no bits in the eggs that are, are not required. Wonderful. Now this mixture is left to stand for around 15 minutes before we roll them into balls and place on our baking sheet. We're going to start off by oiling our baking pan before we roll our Pesach roll mixture. The balls should be the size of about one and a half golf balls. So gently roll them into ro balls about that size. It should be very manageable. If not, you're welcome to wet your hands a little before rolling. We're now going to put the rolls into the oven at 180 degrees Celsius for plus minus about 25 minutes or until they're golden brown. And here are Pesach Passover rolls. Kids love them, adults love them. Enjoy. Until next time, bye-bye. During the Passover Seder, or ritual dinner, we read the Haggadah which relates the story of four different kinds of children. However, Rabbi Shishler, in his series, The Gift of Change, explains the attributes of the four classic life forms and how man has been created with this superior ability to rise above and make positive changes in his life. When we talk about change, the truth is that it's not only a Jewish thing, it's part of being human. And what I mean by that is that our sages teach there are four classic life forms that exist on our planet and in fact in the universe at large. So the most underdeveloped life form is called the inanimate, things like rocks or minerals. They don't move, they don't propagate, they don't grow, they just are what they are unless some external influence affects them, erodes them, moves them, shifts them. More advanced, more developed than that, our plants, the entire vegetable kingdom. They, these are items that can grow. They develop, they give life to new plants. They cross pollinate. Growth, it, it sort of shows, it's a symbol of life. There's some element of life. But nobody would say that a plant has a soul quite in the same way that a human has a soul. You look at a plant, it lives only as long as it is anchored in a particular place. It doesn't have the ability to get up and to move and to go somewhere else. You externally could affect the plant. You could transplant it into a different place. It by itself just doesn't have that ability. It cannot move. It's stuck in the particular piece of soil that gives it nutrients. So more developed than that would be the animal kingdom. That's where you see a s various types of species that can move, they roam, they migrate. Think about whales, think about all the bird species that travel to different regions, sometimes covering incredible distances, sleeping while they're flying. Think about the fact that an animal not only can physically move from one place to another, but it can actually shift and move itself. I used to live in this habitat, I can adapt to live in a new habitat. Or perhaps my favorite example is the weaver building his nest and he thinks he's done a magnificent job until Mrs. Weaver comes along and tears that thing apart and he has to learn, well that wasn't good enough, I've got to do it differently this time. You see that animals have the capacity for some element of change. They can adapt, they can move, they can go beyond the natural place and environment and even circumstances that they were built or born into. Humans have the ultimate capacity 
for change because an animal will generally move roam or change its habitat because of circumstances maybe there's a lack of water maybe there's encroachment of some parasite maybe the temperature's no good humans have the unique ability to change because we feel that we want to change we have the unique ability to read a book and see an idea and that fuels in us a feeling like I want to do something different whatever that difference is I want to lose weight I want to become healthier I want to learn more I'm not happy in the stick in the mud job that I'm in at the moment so I'd like to change I've seen something which sort of opened my eyes and gave me the opportunity to think hey I could be somebody different a human being has the ability to imagine to think abstractly about the fact that maybe there's something I can change about the world not only about myself not only that I should have different or better circumstances but that I could make the world around me have better circumstances we have the capacity to want to be philanthropic to want to be innovative we have the capacity to say I'm not just going to change how things are for me I'm going to change and make things better for everybody around me I'm going to upgrade say for example the technology of our world so life is easier smoother more convenient for people our sages teach that the unique gift of being human is that a human being is naturally wired to want to consistently change themselves to always want to better themselves and that's a gift that we need to embrace and that's a gift that we need to utilize to the fullest that's all we have time for for this week's episode of Simcha thank you so much for joining us if you'd like to catch up on any previous week's episodes log on to our website www.spiritsister.co.za from me, Eitan Berger, and all of us here at Simcha, have a Pesach Kasher V'Sameach, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>